question is from Jazz Fitness. What are your opinions on touch and go versus dead stop for exercises such as deadlifts? Yeah, deadlifts. Well, I I had this conversation with Courtney actually recently because uh, you know she's getting into our programming and starting to go through deadlifts again, and I've been very cautious with her with deadlift specifically because of back issues uh that she's experienced just from moving around patients and throwing her back out and this is a very gradual thing that we're trying to build strength again and and the the proper bracing with it so i started doing it with with touch and go and that was i had to stop her immediately and i'm like okay no every single rep that you're going to take we have to have you know that proper brace first and I want you to completely stop momentum and create that intention within every rep that you're going to do. So we're, I'm not a fan of touch and go either, but we have that in one of our programs. Right. And I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Do you know which one it is off the top of your head? Anabolic. Yeah, anabolic towards the end. Oh, anabolic. Yep, phase three. Well, of course, it's in the one that we weren't a part of. <laughs> so, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not a fan of touch and go. Uh, but touch and go, I, okay, I'm not a fan of touch and go. You'll see me do touch and goes. Okay, uh, so I'm not a fan of it for for the general pop because most people um, I wouldn't consider uh, at a high enough level to be good at touch and go deadlifts because most people's form is off. And to Justin's point about taking their time in between each rep, but does that mean that again, kind of back to the last question we just answered, uh, is is touch and go deadlifts a a bad exercise or a dangerous exercise? Well, no, not if you can perform it safely. If you can keep your core tight and you can keep good form and you have a really good looking deadlift without touch and goes, then touch and go is, is probably just fine. Now, now, I just realized that someone listening might not even know the difference between touch and go deadlifts and dead stop. So uh, real quick, dead stop, you, you bring the barbell all the way to the floor. You let it sit on the floor for about one to three seconds. Yeah, Res- a long second. Yeah, reset and then do the deadlift again, touch and go, you touch the floor and come up. So you're just doing the reps. Now here's what, here's the challenge with touch and go deadlifts. Okay. It's not that the deadlifts don't stop. It's that you hit the ground. So if I did like a squat where I squat until the barbell hit safeties, or if I did any other exercise where I'm bouncing off something, it's going to bounce left to right. That's the yes. problem. The yes. challenge is the bounce is how you're touching the floor and your, coming up. Your QL is going to get us talk right. to you. If you're doing touch and go deadlifts and you're bouncing it off the ground, you're asking for trouble. You're and because if you're if one side touches the floor a split second before the other and you have a lot of load on there, that can cause a problem. Touch and go deadlift needs to be perfect. Mm-hmm. It's not bang, 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 even though you'll see your favorite Instagram you know, celebrities do that. You go down, touch the floor, and come up. That's why it's called touch and go. The reason why a lot of people hurt themselves is because of the bounce part. And when you get that mm-hmm. bounce part, you get, for a split second, you lose stability. But it's so common. Blood. I mean, yes. if, if I'm going to see somebody performing a deadlift in a gym, typically it's touch and go. And mainly because they look at it as a reps thing. Right. Like, I'm trying to get through the workout and get the reps in. And they're not taking that seriousness that, especially something like a deadlift that has a little bit higher risk, uh, in, in it, but has massive reward to it. But you really have to, to slow down and make sure the intention and, you know, all those mechanical things are correct. Yeah. And the reason why it's in MAPS Anabolic in phase three is first off, if you follow the program, phase three, you're between six to nine weeks into the program. It's not a program for complete beginners, but it is a general starter uh, type program. It's also phase three. Phase three, the rest periods are short, meaning that you're, you're not resting as long and the weight's not going to be as heavy. You're not going to do, don't do touch and goes with your heavy, heaviest dump, uh, you know, deadlift weight. You want to go in there light. And if you're doing it to get reps and get a pump and that kind of stuff, that's when it becomes more appropriate. But if you're going to do touch and go again, don't bang off the floor because that will you'll lose stability in an, in, a, in a, for a split second, and then that tends to be when people uh, hurt themselves. 